Pianissimus, everyone. That's hello in ancient Greek. We are all finished learning about ancient Greece today. We are going to take a couple of tests today to see how well we remember everything that we've learned about. To help you remember all of the important things we learned about, we're going to pretend for a minute that we are explorers that lived in ancient Greece. We're going to explore all of these places that I've written on the board and learn and review the important things that happened in those places. All right, are you ready to explore ancient Greece? I know I am. Our first place we're going to explore is Sparta. Take a minute to imagine you're in Sparta, the city-state Sparta. What was life like for people in Sparta? Did they have lots of comforts and luxuries? No, life was very harsh and difficult for Spartan people. The Spartan life was one without comfort. What was Sparta focused on? Sparta was focused on war. In fact, Sparta had two kings in case one of them died in battle. All right, we're going to travel. We're going to take our ancient Greek selves and travel to Athens. Where Sparta was focused on war, what was Athens focused on? Athens was focused on art, on architecture. Remember, that means the way buildings are designed. And on science. We talked about a couple of famous scientists and philosophers from ancient Sparta. We talked about the philosophers Socrates, who had a student named Plato, who was also a famous philosopher, and finally Aristotle. Remember, Aristotle studied things, and we use his classifications for how he grouped animals and plants today. Athens also gave us one of the most important contributions from ancient Greece. What was that very important contribution? Do you remember? That contribution was about government, and it was democracy. Athens was the first place to practice democracy. In a democracy, the people have a voice in their government. They get to vote on leaders and on laws. All leaders are elected, and the people help, help the leader make decisions by voting. All right, we're going to travel again. We're going to move down our board to Olympia. Olympia, we didn't talk a whole lot about, but Olympia was important because it housed another Greek contribution the Olympic Games. Today, the Olympics are just for fun. But in ancient Greece, the Olympics were held to honor Zeus, the king of all gods. The Olympics were originally started as a religious ceremony for Zeus. Another important thing about Olympia is that Olympia was where Mount Olympus is. Remember, the Greek people thought, believed that all of their gods lived on Mount, in a palace on top of Mount Olympus. We talked about the 12 main gods, or the 12 most important gods, in Greek mythology. Do you remember who some of those gods were? Take a minute and see if you can name two or three of them and what they were the god or goddess of. There is a lot you could have named. We talked about Zeus and Poseidon and Hera and Aphrodite and Hephaestus and Apollo and Artemis and Hermes. Ooh, I forgot who we talked about. And Ares, we talked about Athena. We talked about Demeter and Dionysus. He was our last one. We talked about a lot of gods and goddesses. 
Do you remember what they were all, remember the Greeks believed that their gods were responsible for different things. So they believed that Poseidon was the god of the sea and of earthquakes, and that Zeus was the god of lightning. Do you remember what some of those other gods or goddesses were, were in charge of? All right, my friends, it is time for us to move again. This time, we're going to jump to Persia for just a little bit. Persia was a large empire that wanted to conquer more lands. So they invaded parts of ancient Greece. Remember, an invader is someone who enters somewhere by force to take control of that place. The Persians invaded ancient Greece and the Athenians helped other city-states fight against them. Remember, city-states usually did not work together unless it was an emergency like invaders coming. The king of the Persians was not very happy with the Athenians and he tried to invade Athens. Athens did not have enough soldiers to stand up to the larger Persian army. So they sent a very fast runner all the way to Sparta to ask the Spartans for help. But were the Spartans able to help them? No, the Spartans were not able to help. So the Athenians had to use really smart battle strategy in order to win. Do you remember what that battle strategy was? Right, they made their middle weaker so the Persians would attack the middle and then they kept their sides strong so when the Persians hit the middle, the sides could come around and attack from the side. After they won the Battle of Marathon, they sent that very fast runner back to Athens to tell everyone that they had won. But it was so much running that his heart gave out and he died. Today, we call long distance races Marathon after that very fast runner. His name was Phidippides. Phidippides. All right, after the Battle of Marathon, we talked about another battle. That was the Battle of Thermopylae, the last stand at Thermopylae. This time, the Spartans were able to help fight in this battle. But many of the Spartans had to make a sacrifice and stay behind to hold the Persians off so that the other Greek forces could get ready to fight. I want to talk a little bit, we've talked about all of our places and our battles. I want to talk about a man named Alexander. What do you remember about Alexander the Great? Alexander the Great studied under Aristotle, one of our very smart scientists from Athens. Alexander the Great wanted to have a great empire. And so he became an invader, just like the Persians. Alexander worked, invaded Greek city-states and took control of them. He worked with some of them to fight back against the Persians, but then he never relinquished control. Alexander then went on to conquer all of Persia. After he had conquered all of Persia, he wanted to conquer all of India, but his men asked him to stop. And eventually he died. Alexander created one of the largest empires in the world. He conquered more lands than anyone else had before or after him. He was pretty impressive. He was a pretty impressive conqueror, but not a very nice person. Remember, he did not rel relinquish control of lots of city-states and other countries when he promised that he would. All right, my friends, I think that's everything you need to know for our test. And I think that you guys are ready to do amazing. I'm gonna move over to my computer and move my camera a little bit so I can ask you those questions on those tests, on that test. Those tests, there's multiple tests. There's three different ones. Go ahead and open the PDF attached to this assignment with those tests on it. And I'll read those questions for you. All right, my friends, I got a little bit carried away. I forgot there is one more thing we need to do 
before we take our tests. When you get that PDF open, the first page should look like this. On this page, we're going to want to turn it. There we go. We'll turn it back when we do our test. But for this page, we want we want it to be sideways to make it easier for us to see. We have learned about a lot of different things in ancient Greece, and we just reviewed some of those things that we learned about. On this first page, I want you to pick two of the things or topics that we learned about, and we're going to compare and contrast them. When we compare and contrast, we're talking about how things are different from each other and how they are similar to each other. So things about them that are different and things about them that are the same. There are a lot of things that you could choose to compare and contrast. You could pick two city-states. You could compare and contrast Sparta and Athens. You could compare and contrast Pheidippides and an Olympic runner. You could compare and contrast two of the gods or goddesses that we learned about. You could compare and contrast leaders or philosophers that we learned about. You get to choose. You are going to put your choices, the two things you've chosen to compare and contrast, on these two lines. So if we're doing Sparta and Athens, I'll write both of them on these lines. Now remember, you can choose anything that you would like, anything that we learned about that you would like to compare and contrast. How this Venn diagram works, we have these two circles. On the outside right here, we're going to put things that are only true about Sparta. So something about Sparta that is different from Athens. On this side, on the Athens side, we're going to write things that are true about Athens, but are not true about Sparta. And in the middle, we're going to put things that are the same. So our two on the outside will be differences. And our section in the middle will be things about them that are the same. Some things that are different about Athens and Sparta is that Athens or Sparta had very little comforts and Athens did have more comforts. Sparta was focused on war, where Athens was focused on art and architecture and science. Some things are the same are that they were city-states in ancient Greece and that they worked together in, an, in emergencies like the Battle of Thermopylae. You get to choose. I want three things that are different, so three on each side of our differences, and three things about them that are the same for whatever you have chosen. You could choose to compare and contrast Pericles and Alexander the Great, or Plato and Aristotle. You get to choose what you're comparing and contrasting. This is just an example. You can choose anything you would like. When you are done filling out your Venn diagram, and you're done comparing and contrasting two different th things that we learned about in ancient Greece, we're going to flip back right side up and scroll down to the first assessment. We have four assessments for this domain. I'm going to jump back on the camera and ask you these questions. All right, my friends. On the, that first page of those assessments, you should have a series of thumbs up and thumbs down. We've done tests like this a couple of times. I'm going to ask you some questions about some of the words that we've learned about in this domain. If the answer to my question is yes, you're going to circle or fill in the thumbs up. If the answer to my question is no, you're going to circle or fill in the thumbs down. If you need to pause between questions, you can pause and then resume when you're ready for the next one. I will only say each question once, so if you need more time, make sure you pause and then resume when you're ready. 
All right, my friends. Number one is about the word conquest. Was Alexander the Great taking over parts of India a conquest? Two is about the word messenger. If the student give, gave his parents a letter from his teacher, does that mean that he was a messenger? Number three is about the word invader. Was Alexander the Great a famous invader of the Persian Empire? Four is about the word Spartan. If someone lives a Spartan life, does that mean that they live a comfortable and luxurious life? Five is about the word democracy. Is democracy a way of ruling that gives all of the power to the king? In a democracy, does the king have all the power? Number six is about the word contribution. Is silk a contribution of the ancient Greek civilization? Seven is about the word marathon. Is a marathon a contribution from ancient Greeks? Number eight is about the word philosopher. Is a philosopher a person who studies life, knowledge, and truth? Nine is about the word architecture. Is the Parthenon an example of ancient Greek architecture? is about the word city-state. Is a city-state a large country with many towns and cities all under one government? Eleven is about the word channel. Is a channel a large strip of land between two bodies of water? is independently. If you do something independently, does that mean that you do it without help? Thirteen is marvelous. If a performance is excellent or wonderful, might you also call it marvelous? Fourteen is about prefer. If you prefer something, does that mean that you don't like it at all? And fifteen is about the word tame. If you train a horse to obey you, does that mean that you have tamed the horse? All right, my friends, on the next page of that assignment, each row has three different words, three different names or words. I'm going to read those names and words aloud to you, and then I'm going to make a statement that is true about one of them. You are going to circle the name that my statement is true about, that my statement describes. On question number one, the names are Athena, Zeus, and Apollo. In ancient Greek religion, 
I am the king of all the gods and goddesses on Mount Olympus. In ancient Greek religion, I am the king of all the gods and goddesses on Mount Olympus. Is that Athena, Zeus, or Apollo? Number two, our names are Zeus, Hermes, and Athena. According to a Greek legend, the Greek city-state of Athens was named after me, after I offered the, the Athenians the gift of the olive tree. Was that Zeus, Hermes, or Athena? Number three, the names are Aristotle, Alexander the Great, and Plato. I received my name because I conquered so many areas during my lifetime. Was that Aristotle, Alexander the Great, or Plato? Number four, our names are Marathon, Athens, and Thermopylae. This is a place where a runner ran many miles during a famous battle. Now there is a race named after it. Was that Marathon, Athens, or Thermopylae? Go ahead and scroll down to the next page when you're ready. On this page, we have our thumbs up and thumbs down again. I'm going to ask you some questions about things that we learned in this domain. If the answer to my question is yes, you'll circle or fill in the thumbs up. If the answer to my question is no, you'll circle or fill in the thumbs down. Number one. Did the ancient Greeks believe that Mount Olympus was the home of the most powerful gods and goddesses? Again, if you need more time, go ahead and pause between questions. Number two. Were the Olympic Games a bunch of contests that ancient Greek philosophers like Plato competed in? Number three, were Sparta and Athens city-states in Greece? Number four, was democracy one of Sparta's contributions to us today? Number five, did Alexander the Great succeed in conquering many lands? Number six. Are the Olympic Games today exactly the same as the Olympic Games held in ancient Greece? Number seven. Did the Persians win the Battle of Marathon and the Battle of Thermopylae? Number eight. Did the famous and wise philosopher Socrates believe in buying lots of stuff and in being alone? Number nine. Did Alexander the Great work very hard to become strong and powerful? Sorry, my friends. I think earlier I told you there was three parts. There's four parts to this one. I forgot about our fourth part. Go ahead and scroll down to our fourth and final part of our tests today. 
On this test, I want you to write in complete sentences. I'm going to read these questions aloud for you. Make sure you answer in a complete sentence on each one. I'm going to have you pause the video after I read the questions and make sure you finish answering before hitting resume and listening to the next. Our first question, number one, says choose one of the Greek gods or goddesses that you have learned about and tell me something special about them. Name one Greek god or goddess and tell me something about them. What were they the god or goddess of? Number two says, what is one contribution that the ancient Greeks gave to the rest of the world? Make sure you describe it. Don't just name the contribution. Tell me about it. One contribution that the ancient Greeks gave the rest of the world. Number three says, if you could meet one of the people that we learned about, whom would you choose and why? There are two parts to that one. Who would you choose and why? Who would you want to meet? Number four says, how were Sparta and Athens different? And number five says, what was the most interesting thing that you learned about ancient Greek civilization? What was the most interesting thing that you learned about ancient Greek civilization? All right, my friends, as soon as you have those tests complete, go ahead and turn them in and we are done for today. I will see you next time.